I'm Jenna Robinson, president of the James G. Martin Center for Academic Renewal, and today I'm going to talk about academic quality. This is the first in a three-part series about how academic quality is declining across all segments of American higher education. Specifically today, I want to talk about how it starts before students ever set foot on campus. High schools have dumbed down their content and admissions requirements have been dropping at schools across the country. Right here, I have a Harvard entrance exam from 1869, and it is significantly different from what we see today. The first page asks students to translate into Latin and the first item is to translate, I do not care how rich Gyges is. It goes on then to Latin grammar, Greek grammar, and Greek composition. After that, it moves on to history and geography. Um, one of the questions is, describe the route of the 10,000 or lay it down on a map. And another question is to compare Athens with Sparta. And I imagine today's students get most of their knowledge about that from the movie The 300, rather than actually having learned about it in class. In the arithmetic section, Students are asked to find the cube root of 0.0093 to 5 places of decimals and find the square root 531.3 to 3 places of decimals. And of course, this is all done without a calculator because it was 1869. Um, and then in the section on logarithms and trigonometry, it asks, what is the logarithm of 1 in any system, of any number in any system of which that number is the base? It moves on to algebra, a lot of equations that I can't really describe uh, verbally. And then plane geometry. One of the questions is prove that a line drawn through two sides of a triangle, triangle parallel to the third side divides those two sides into proportional parts. So this is an eight page exam that Harvard gave in 1869. And it's, it's clearly very, very different from what you would see today. Today what we see is that the proliferation of universities that occurred mostly in the 20th century means that the majority of U.S. students, or U.S. colleges rather, now admit most students who apply. And as the population of qualified young people decreases because we are in an era of demographic decline, this will get even worse. And the tools that we use to determine college readiness have also been stripped of their meaning, which means that the decision-making process of who to admit has gotten even harder. Many schools have dropped the SAT or the ACT. More than 900 universities are now test optional, which includes the entire California state system, which is the largest four-year university system in the United States. And it seems like more schools dropping the SAT and the ACT is on the rise. In addition to that, a series of changes to the SAT has made it easier over time. There's also less differentiation at the top of the test range, making it harder for universities to distinguish between the truly brilliant students and those who are merely very bright. Lastly, grade inflation in high schools has been on the rise in the last several decades making it very difficult for colleges to distinguish quality students, figure out which ones really have talent and grit, and are prepared for college level work. The proportion of students with A averages increased from 38.9% of the graduating class of 1998 to 47% of the graduating class of 2016. And according to the Department of Education, the average high school grade point average was 2.68 in 1990, and by 2016 it had risen to 3.38. For all of these reasons, college admissions are not what they used to be, and academic quality, once students get to college, suffers as a consequence. 